Welcome back friends. Let's continue with CA cervix. Till now we have seen that it has a pre-malignant lesion. Previously WHO has classified it into mild, moderate and severe dysplasia. And when the full thickness of stratified squamous epithelium was showing dysplastic cells, it was called as carcinoma in C2 and the basement membrane was intact in that condition. Then we had the classification. Mild was called as CIN1. Moderate CIN2 and severe dysplasia and carcinoma in C2 was labeled as CIN3. And then there was introduction of Bethesda system in which CIN1 as l cell or blow cell and CIN2 and CIN3 as H cell. And we have seen the management of these lesions. And we know that it's a progression from CIN1 less than 1% progresses to carcinoma cervix from CIN2. 5% progresses to carcinoma cervix and CIN3, 22% progresses to CIN3. And this time interval is almost around 8 to 10 years. From CIN1 to microinvasive carcinoma, it takes 8 to 10 years. So we have this much period to detect this pre-malignant condition and save the lady or her life. Now let's see how invasive carcinoma presents. The clinical features of invasive carcinoma depends on the lesion. Usually patient comes with irregular bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding. I have highlighted this point here also because it's the most common symptom. She has irregular per vagina bleeding. It can be in between the menses. Menometorrhagia is the other term used for this. Continuous bleeding can also be there. She will also complain of postcoital bleeding, and this postcoital bleeding symptom is very specific of CS cervix because, as you know, it's a cauliflower like growth, necrotis, lots of blood supply, and whenever there is coitus that gets disturbed, and there would be postcoital bleeding. Leucorrhea because of necrotic tissue, there may be foul smell. So, white discharge along with blood stained, along with foul smell, is again suggestive of invasive carcinoma. So blood stained and offensive discharge. On examination, we will see a growth which may be like a cauliflower or an ulcer with ages that bleeds on touch. This growth is always friable. On examination, PV examination, the uterus will be bulky. Maybe because of associated pyometra or it may be of normal size. So we, when we examine the patient, we always go for clinical staging of CA cervix. Please do remember that this cancer cervix is staged clinically. Clinically means on examination and with some added examinations like colposcope and all. So what are the things we do in clinical staging? We do general examination of the patient where we go for lymph node palpation. Then when we do PS and PV examination, we look at the lesion. We look at the vagina, how much spread that lesion has caused. PR examination is mandatory. Examination of CA cervix, whether you get a clinical case or an MCQ or a MCQ, PR exam is mandatory to see whether the recurrectal mucosa is involved or not. And again, it informs about the parameter involvement as well. So PR examination is must when you are examining the patient in CA cervix. The added, added examinations which give us more information about the spread of the disease are like colposcopy, cystoscopy, proctoscopy and hystoscopy. So these are the scopies which tell us whether there is bladder involvement, whether there is rectal involvement and in case of adenocarcinoma, cystoscopy would be more informative, even about the upper spread of the lesion. IVP is a diagnostic test or it, it is an investigation which tells us about changes in the kidney, whether there is hydronephrosis, whether there is kidney involvement. So for clinical staging, we need these exams and these tests to stage the tumor. Other investigations like chest x-ray or barium enema, CT MRI, PET scan can give us added information. But FIGO staging, that is FIGO clinical staging, will not change depending on the information given by these tests. 
means suppose you have an MCQ which tells that CT scan is showing involvement of paraortic nodes or some other nodes on CT scan that doesn't change the stage of the carcinoma. Please remember, I'm going back to the last slide. Only on palpation, you can detect the lymph nodes if they are enlarged. On examination, you can see vaginal spread and grade it accordingly if upper vagina involved or lower vagina involved. PR examination is must. Colposcopy, these four scopies, colposcopy, then anteriorly we want to know whether bladder is involved or not. So we do cystoscopy. Posteriorly, the organ related is rectum. So we do proctoscopy and hysteroscopy to see the uterine spread. IVP to know kidney involvement. So these are the things which are helpful in doing the clinical staging. CT scan, MRI findings will not change the clinical staging of CS cervix. Mind well. Lymph nodes involved in CS cervix. Parasurvical, parametrial, that the primary nodes where they are there. Obturator node is the sentinel node in CS cervix. Sentinel is the first node, means if we are doing a surgery, sometimes we go for sentinel node and if that node is positive, then we go further. If that node is negative, then we don't do further dissection because it has increased morbidity when we go for uh, extensive lymph node dissection. Internal, external and common ilia group, hypogastric nodes, presacral and subaortic. These are the lymph nodes related with cervix and they are they get involved in CS cervix. So again, likely MCQ on lymph node involvement in CS cervix. Now going for the staging of the cervix. Let's focus on important points because the staging is in detail. Stage 1. Any stage 1 is the involvement of that particular organ. So we are talking about CS cervix. So stage 1 is restricted when the involvement is restricted only to the cervix. Stage 1A. In stage 1A, there is no clinically detectable lesion on the cervix. There is microinvasion. If you have, you have pap smear suggestive of this, either HCL, and then you have done a biopsy on colposcopy or acetic acid guided or Lugol's ident guided. And this biopsy is giving you information that the stromal invasion is less than 5 mm from the base and the lateral spread is less than 7 mm. Then such patient is in stage 1A. If it is no uh, lymph vascular invasion, the treatment is more conservative when the growth is less than 2 cm. And if on biopsy, it suggests there is a lymph vascular invasion and the growth is more than 2 cm, then we go for extensive surgery like Verdheim's hysterectomy, even though the stage is same. Now, in stage 1A1, the stromal invasion is less than 3 mm. So you get an MCQ which says that the biopsy report of a particular patient says that the microinvasion or the stromal invasion is less than 3 mm in depth and less than 7 mm in horizontal spread. So that suggests that she is stage 1A1 and her chances of having lymph node involvement is much much less that is 0.5%. So when the stromal invasion depth is less and the horizontal spread is less, lymph node involvement is less likely and thus in that patient the treatment can be just therapeutic conization. But if the patient is elderly and she has completed her family, then we can go for simple hysterectomy in that particular patient. Now see stage 1A2 in which the stromal invasion is from 3 to 5 millimeter in depth and the horizontal spread is less than 7 mm. But here, see the difference. The lymph node involvement and the recurrence rate chance is almost 5%, which we have to pay attention to. And then immediately, the treatment changes to extended hysterectomy, and in which we have to do lymph node sampling. And if postoperatively, if the lymph nodes show malignant cells, then we have to go for post-operative radiotherapy. If a patient is young and she wants to continue her reproductive function, then we can go for trachelectomy, means removal of the cervix, with laparoscopic lymph node biopsies. 
and in case those come positive then we have to go for radiotherapy so this in case of a very young patient but because the stromal invasion has increased from 3 mm to 5 mm the lymph node involvement chances have raised and that's why we have to go for extensive surgery stage 1b mostly there is clinically visible lesion on the cervix now so we can take a punch biopsy this lesion is still confined to the cervix or there can be a micro invasive microscopic lesion but which is more than stage 1 and 2 that's why she falls in stage 1b stage 1b is again divided into 1b1 and 1b2 if the lesion is less than or equal to 4 cm 1b1 if the lesion is more than 4 cm she becomes 1b2 and the treatment for stage 1b is radical hysterectomy either vardhan hysterectomy or shwata mitra hysterectomy and toxic lymphectomy along with that we can also give primary radiotherapy and then go for surgery or it's a combination suppose usually the mcq would come as if what are the options the surgery or radiotherapy or chemotherapy or all or none so we have to say that in 1b we can have all the possible options here it's a combined therapy can also be given either surgery radiotherapy or chemotherapy when we do vardhan's lymph node dissection if the nodes come positive we have to go for post operative radiotherapy stage 2 in stage 2 the cancer spread beyond the cervix so it starts spreading now it has left the cervix and start spreading either horizontally or vertically downwards but it has not yet reached up to the lateral pelvic wall so what stage 2a says that there is no parametrial invasion yet means the horizontal spread has not occurred but there can be vertical down spread so upper vaginal involvement upper one third of the vagina if it is involved upper one third to two third it falls in stage 2a please remember that if you have a if mcq says that her upper vagina is involved she falls in stage 2a and if parametria are involved she is directly for stage 2b for till stage 2a we can go for radical hysterectomies but from 2b onwards she is inoperable and we have to go for either chemo radiation or more extensive surgeries like extensation stage 3 the tumor reaches up to the lateral pelvic wall it involves lower one third of the vagina so see now the horizontal spread has also increased and reached up to the lateral pelvic wall and vertically down also it has reached to the lower one third of the vagina and there will be hydronephrosis on ivp so in this case there can again the treatment modality is chemo radiotherapy Stage 3a, it involves lower one third of the vagina, but no extension to the lateral pelvic wall. And stage 3b says there is extension up to the lateral pelvic wall and there is involvement of kidney. Again, pay attention to this point. Kidney is as such a distant organ. But kidney involvement in CA cervix is considered as 3b. This is little unusual. Even though kidneys are far off, still they are included if the involvement of kidneys is there she is included in 3b so this is a point to be stressed a question might come patient showing hydronephrosis on ivp there is involvement of kidneys so in which stage this patient falls by figo cervical clinical staging so 3b is the answer for this question stage 4 that is spread to pelvic organs distant metastasis pelvic organs and distant metastasis stage 4a when there is anterior spread to the bladder posterior spread to the rectum and spread beyond the true pelvis that is stage 4a and stage 4b when the tumor has spread distant metastasis so bladder involvement is 4a and kidney involvement is 3b please remember these points when the patient is not operable Radiotherapy is the choice of treatment and now the chemotherapeutic agents are added which are actually they increase the radio sensitivity of the tumor. Whenever we give radiotherapy that can be in the form of brachytherapy or external radiation or extensive radiation later. Brachytherapy, Paris method, Stockholm methods, Manchester method, you know these methods. In this 
there are certain points to be remember point A and point B. Point B is located 2 cm above and lateral to the external os. If this is the external os, 2 cm lateral and above to the external os is the location point A and which structure is present there is paracervical and parametrial lymph node. So to this point enough of radiation should go and that is around 7000 to 8000 centigrade. The point over here important point at this is presence of ureters. So the radiation should be enough for the lymph nodes but they should not damage the ureters and that is what is the significance of this point. Point B is 5 cm lateral means 3 cm away from the point B. If this is the external loss 2 cm away and above is point A. From here 3 cm away that means total 5 cm away from the cavity is the point B and it suggests obturator lymph node. That's the sentinel lymph node for CS cervix and we should see to it that enough radiation reaches to this point that is around 4000 to 6000, 6000 centigrade should be given to this point otherwise the treatment would be insufficient. You have to remember these points and their significance. There are chemotherapeutic agents. These are the drugs, the more sensitive doxorubicin, cisplatin, vinblastine and bleomycin. So now, nowadays the treatment for CSRVX is surgery, post-op radiotherapy if required or chemo radiation where chemotherapy plus radiation is given. The complications are there can be pyometra that means collection of pus. There can be cervical stenosis, the secretions get collected and get infected later on. There can be fistula formation, vesicovaginal or rectovaginal. There can be uremia. Uremia is a very common complication and that may lead to even death in CA cervix. Many times this MCQ has been asked, so you don't forget uremia and CA cervix. There can be nephrosis and death because of these complications. So how can we prevent CA cervix? We have seen that it has a long period of involvement, pre-malignant lesion, we can either detect it in early phases and then treat it by the different modalities like ablative method, excision methods or surgical methods. But can we really prevent it? So now there is work going on this and there are two types of vaccine released in the market. One is Gardasil and one is Cervarix. These are the vaccines available against HPV 6, 11, 16 and 18. Gardasil is available. This is a quadrivalent vaccine against these four types of HPVs and Cervarix is bivalent against HPV 16 and 18. Three doses, Gardasil 0, 2, 6 and Cervarix 016. Fine, now uh, there is still debates going on about the cost effectiveness and usefulness of these vaccines but they are in the market and once it's clarified or once uh, it is well proven that they are really protective against CSRVX we should be giving these vaccines to the patients before they get sexually active before they get HPV infected to avoid the CSRVX. So this finishes with CSRVX. Thank you.